Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Semmain. I've got a very special video tutorial for you today. I'm making a onesie t-shirt quilt. This has been on my bucket list of quilts to make forever. I've been saving my kids clothes since they were itty bitty. And now I get to make it into a quilt because my publisher has put together a t-shirt quilt book. It's called Patchwork T-shirt Quilts and Projects. And it has submissions from lots of different authors within our publishing group, all of whom came up with a little bit different project. Mine is a onesie quilt, so we're making log cabin blocks, and the block center is determined by the size of the motif on your onesie. So we have everything all the way up from three inch finished centers for when they're itty bitty and they're just coming home from the hospital, all the way up to nine inch centers where there's no log cabin strips and the block is entirely a t-shirt quilt and that's up to 2T. So you can sort of capture the first two years of your lives and the special moments and the clothes that went with them in this quilt. Um, I saved way too many. I have a hundred blocks in this quilt. You certainly don't have to be that intense with yours, but you can and the instructions are there for it. It's a little bit of a choose your own adventure because everyone's shirt is t-shirt quilt is gonna end up being a little bit different because it's determined by how many things you kept and what size the centers are. So we came up with, rather than the standard, here's exactly how much you need, we came up with some charts. So that way you can figure out, okay, how many do I have? What size are the centers? And how many of the different log cabin strips am I gonna need the different sizes? And then you can figure out how much you need to go to the store and buy. But I wanna show you how some of mine turn out because they're super, super cute. And by the way, this book is available on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you grab it from us, I'll send you a signed copy. We're so excited to have it here. And just so you know, while you absolutely can get it from Amazon, we make like, very minimal, like cents if you purchase from Amazon. If you get it from us, then we make about half of that purchase price as profit and we are able to bring it into making more video tutorials like this for you because I'm gonna to be totally honest, I'm, I was paid $100 to make this quilt for the book which did not even cover the price and the materials. I did it because it finally got me a chance to make this for you and make this for me and then also because I know that you guys will love it and if you guys can get the supplies from us then that helps us to be able to create content for you. We also have a free video tutorial series all about t-shirt quilts. So if you need a visual explainer in addition to the book on how to work with knits, how to cut things out, how to fuse it to interfacing, it covers all of that um, beyond what we have here. But let me show you some of these blocks. Now I use Patrick Lowe's um, fabric and that is available through Northcott and this is called Glisten. It's a reordable fabric so we'll try to have it in stock you know now when the book comes out and I love it because it looks like a cram box to me and I think it's perfect for kids quilts like this. Uh, this is one of the little hats that they wear since it says Genesis. I know that this one was from my older daughter because that's where she was born. And I remember giving this shirt or this onesie to my husband when I found out I was pregnant for the first time. And this was the outfit that my first daughter came home from the hospital in. That was the onesie and this is the pants. And I am gonna cover how to cut and fuse pants to be included in this as well, because especially if you have a little girl, they like to put a lot of little embellishments on the butt and they are super cute. But you can see how this works with different size zones. This one is super small. Um, this one is a three inch finish. This one is four. So essentially we're just missing these two pieces when we move on into this one. This one is a bib. So we're gonna show you how to cut those out too. because Some of them are pretty adorable. And this outfit was what my second daughter came home from the hospital in. Then I wanna share two more that are 3D. So this one was from my older daughter's first Christmas. We took her to see Santa in this and we have a 3D elf collar that I included with it. This was from my second daughter um, and it has this tutu on it and tulle doesn't unravel. So I was able to cut the center that it was attached to and then the little tutu skirt is gonna hang free from the quilt. So you can really have a lot of fun with this and have it be super fun super unique to you and I'm going to show you how I cut some of the special ones here because 
if you if you just have a straight onesie and it's flat and there's not a lot going on with it, we have a video in part of our t-shirt quilt that shows you how to do that. And we'll cover some of that in this lesson too. But this is more for the ones that are a little bit challenging so that way you know how to handle it at home. All right, so the challenging pieces I held back to sew on camera for you guys are the bib because that it's got a lot of layers. I'm gonna show you how to take it apart so it's a little easier. And then also a pants back because this isn't flat because it's gotta go around a big round diaper. So I'm gonna show you how to work with that. And then we have this one, and this is pretty common at least with the girls' clothes that I had for my little girls. Um, we have a little motif that's going over the zipper of a onesie. So you can cut over this with scissors and or your rotary cutter. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to do that so that way we can get everything good to go. So the first thing you need to do is prep your ruler. For this project, we went up to a nine and a half inch square was the largest one that I cut. So I used two rulers for that. I used my regular six and a half inch ruler and then I did buy a nine and a half inch ruler just for this project to help with some of the bigger sizes. Um, so what you're gonna do though, because we wanna be able to see exactly where the center of this is, is we're going to create a window. So you're just gonna take some painter's tape and in this one, I need to mark it off at four and a half inches. So I'm lining up my painter's tape at the four and a half inch mark here. And if there's any extra, you can just wrap it around the side. It won't leave a residue, just like it won't on your wall. So this is perfect to use. And we're gonna be moving it with every new size. All right, so we've got our bib here. The first thing I'm gonna try and do is kind of lay it out as flat as I can. If you need to iron it, by all means, go ahead and do that. So I've got my bib kind of as flat as I can get it. So now what I wanna do is I wanna center it. Now remember, the half inch, you're gonna lose. So the quarter inch all around the side is, is not gonna be there. So anything outside of here, not gonna happen. That also means that our half inch is actually a quarter inch beyond what you think it would be. So this is gonna be four inches finished. So two and a quarter is actually straight down the center. So I've got that right smack dab in between my unicorn faces. So that's gonna look nice and good. Also, I can see that my clouds are above the quarter inch down here. So I'm gonna see them. And my unicorn horns are also below the quarter inch here. So we're gonna be good. I'm gonna be able to see all of my unicorn bits. Everything I think is looking pretty good. So now this is nowhere near flat because there's so much in a bib. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut across. And I found that for ones like this, like you really just need to cut the whole thing away. Um, it makes everything a lot easier. Now, if you're able to just walk around the table and cut from that side, that's ideal because knits tend to kind of move a little when you pick them up and move them around. But I found that that wasn't always possible for me. So I did pick it up and move it and flip it around. So that's 180 degree flip. My cut edges are now on my left and my bottom here. So now we're gonna line up those cut edges with what we already did. And I can see that things have shifted because it wasn't quite like that earlier. Um, if you do end up with like a little bit of this binding caught in there, that's not the end of the world. Um, it's fine. It's It'll just be a little bit stiffer in that seam, but it's not the end of the world. So now we've got this, but we don't want all of this bib. That's too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out that center part that made it fluffy. And we're left with this mangled mess, which I promise will look good once we get it fused, which I'll show you after we get through the other problem child cutting situations. So now we're gonna fuse our problem child onesies and adjacent elements. Now, what I did is I just kind of worked corner around just like normal. And some of these you need to use an applique pressing sheet for. I actually don't have any here that you need it for. This is what one looks like. They're made of Teflon, the same stuff your nonstick pans are. You wanna use this anytime you have screen printing ink in between your iron and your um, fabric. These are all embroidery designs, so I don't have to use it for those. I actually didn't have to use it for a lot of them. So that is kind of nice. But whenever you are at this fusing step, and then also when you're doing your first press of log cabins going around, you're gonna to wanna to have this handy because there will be ones where you do need to use it with it. All right, so I'm gonna go a little slow here. I'm just gonna start with this corner. I'm just gonna put that down there. It's a little harder when you have the little pieces because they don't wanna stay in place as well as the uh, big t-shirts do. 
All right, now you can see it's super wrinkly along the sides here. We're just gonna slowly kind of work our way down the sides. And the goal is to not get any bunching as you go. It's looking already a lot better right there. One more. All right, now we just need to get the center. And at this point, if it stays a little puffy, that's fine. All right, that is just about as good as we're gonna get with all this thick embroidery. We've got all of our sides together. We have all the areas where it's not embroidery stuck down really good. So this would be perfectly fine to get it together for your quilt top, and then it'll all get stuck together when we do quilting later. So no matter what size center you're going with, your first strip is always going to go on the top. And then we're gonna work clockwise around to create our strips from there until we've made it all the way around your block and then you will be good to go. And then you're always gonna end with one nine and a half inch strip. That's always gonna be the last one you do. So we're just gonna work our way clockwise going around until we've sewn all of our strips on. So I'm just sewing with a standard quarter inch seam here. And my sewing machine is having a little bit of trouble getting going because that is a super thick seam there that we're getting started with. But again, I'm gonna line up this edge of this strip with the edge of where my interfacing is, which is in just like not even a 16th of an inch from where the edge of that waistband was. So I'm following that line of that fusible instead. All right, so we can see where we're sticking out just a little bit here. And that's on purpose because it is in line with the fusible underneath it. That's what matters. That's what's gonna keep everything square. All right, so for this first round, if you watch me, you know I love to press those seams open. But we're not gonna do that for our first round of piecing here because there's no way that that t-shirt quilt is gonna press open, not gonna happen. So we're just gonna press that out going this way. Uh, the reason why I like to press open, by the way, is you lose a little bit less in terms of your fabric. So log cabin blocks in particular tend to get a little bit smaller, 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 depending on how many seams we have in them. But it's not gonna be bad if we just do the first one. That won't be so terrible. So now we're about to go around our second round of log cabins. Depending on what size your center is, you might not have a second round, but for most of them you will. So to press those block seams open, all you do is you open that up and then you're gonna put the tip of your iron down the center. You can see I'm angling it to the side because they don't wanna accidentally get any of these going in the wrong direction, but this will help keep your blocks the size they're meant to be because you're kind of evenly distributing that fold over both of the seams and it's gonna make it a lot easier to keep everything the right size going forward. All right, I'm gonna keep going around, pressing those seams open until my block is done. Now, just like with any block I do, the final thing I'm gonna do is spray everything with my spray mister. I don't like to use steam in my iron, mostly because it, every iron I've ever put water into eventually gets gross, and I don't want that to happen to my alisos. And it acts the same as steam. Like, you can see how nice and straight that is, whereas the rest of the block still is, is rather wavy. Um, and it just helps flatten everything out. Again, remember when you're doing this step, if you have any sort of screen printing or vinyl in here, don't, don't put your iron straight on top of that unless you put that pressing sheet. This is just to flatten and straighten out those log cabin blocks uh, strips so that way you have an easier time fitting everything together when we have the different size centers and we arrange everything for the final quilt. 
just because I'm sure I'm going to have questions about this. You can sew over the zipper. You can sew straight over it. Don't do it at your fastest speed. Uh, slow down for that. But it's the same same process. This is going to be my top fabric for this block. I'm just going to arrange it right sides together. Stitch straight across. Just go slow and I promise you will not break a zipper. It'll be just fine. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I'm actually filming it about six months before the book comes out because I've got to get the sample done so it can be in the book. I hope you have come up with some ideas on what you can do with all those baby clothes that you have saved. I have a, I did not cut up any of the ones that my mom had saved for, that were mine when I was little or the things that I made, handmade for my kids. So as I'm saving as whole garments. But as far as the onesies go and like the, you know, home from the hospital outfits, it's like, what do I do with this thing? Well, here it is. You can have all your memories in a pile of quilt blocks that will be a finished quilt by the time you guys see this. Again, that book is called Patchwork T-Shirt Quilts and Projects. It features designs from a bunch of different designers that work with my publisher. And this one is my contribution, the onesie quilt. It has designs all the way from a little tiny three inch center for those itty bitty clothes all the way to where the whole entire block is a t-shirt and all the way in between so it's going to fit all the sizes it's going to be lovely and it'll have all your favorite memories in clothing form and you can see how that just works by just cutting the different size t-shirt centers and putting log cabins around them so it's really fun i can't wait to actually get this together and share it with all of you guys Go check out the book. Again, you can get a signed copy from us over at shop.quiltatexonomous.com. You can get it on Amazon, but uh, we make sense, just sense when you get it from Amazon. When you get it from us, we get to keep about half of that, which helps us bring you free video tutorials. So that way, if you're a visual learner, you know what you're doing and all the other goodies. We also got the Glisten that I used here available for you guys. Um, you're gonna have to order that, uh, whatever your favorite colors are. And again, it's kind of a choose your own adventure situation with the quilting because um, how much you need is gonna be dependent on how many blocks you have, what size centers you have, because obviously if it's little, you need more strips. And if it's bigger, you don't. And so we have a chart that's gonna help you figure that out, but it is teeny, teeny little bit of math a little bit we did as much as we could for you but you'll be able to figure that out i am positive so check that out all over at shop.quiltanonymous.com and until next time happy quilting mm -hmm.